Lights Camera Hoax, The Final Frontier. Though America did claim to have done some of this exploring by land on the moon in 1969, there is intense deliberation as to the legitimacy of this event. Maybe after these reasons you'll start thinking, that's no moon. Anyways, in space, at least this solar system, there is only one light source available, the sun. Using basic lighting knowledge, all the shadows should fall in the same direction since all the light comes from one direction. Basic stuff. But to the misfortune of NASA, in photos it's really, really clear that the shadows go in different directions, offering a strong case against the truth of the moon landing. It is very plausible that there were actually multiple different lights showing that there was more to this event than what they've been telling us. Explanations include hills on the moon's surface causing reflections of light, making discrepancies in the shadows. Despite that, the evidence is extremely controversial. It just doesn't make sense that the shadows would be that different. But I mean, I'm no scientist. To reach the moon, first you have to pass through the Van Allen radiation belt. Doesn't sound as exciting as a meteor belt, but it's hundreds of times more dangerous. To travel through it, it would take a serious amount of armor plating to withstand lethal doses of radiation. Radaways don't exist here, so this is a big problem. NASA says that they've had enough aluminum plating coating in the interior and exterior of the ship to provide adequate protection to the astronauts. Plus, they say that the time spent there was so short that the radiation could not possibly have accumulated enough to kill them. Well, after spending billions of dollars trying to put people on the moon, you would think that they would have thought this through already. They must have some top secret materials we still don't know about. Anyways, one of the first photos of the moon landing showed a puzzling image to viewers. People noticed that the American flag rippled as if there was a breeze. This is problematic since there should be no wind on the moon to cause this effect. This is one of the initial arguments for a fake moon landing. NASA has gone to disprove this claim by responding that the flag was stored in a tube which rippled from the force of being put down into the floor by the astronaut. While air does not exist on the moon, action and reaction still works like normal. This seems to be a plausible explanation, but I mean, what would a famous American event be without a waving flag anyways? What a sea rock. One of the most famous photos that supports the fake moon landing argument is the sea rock. The photo shows a rock on the ground with a perfectly symmetrical sea engraved in its side. It's likely that people assumed that this was a label for a prop rock they used in the filming and that they forgot to put it down in the correct way. It's very difficult for something like this to happen in nature, so it provides some pretty substantial evidence for monkey business. Even so, taking into account that the film was developed manually and not digitally stored back then, it's possible that there was just an error in the development of the film with someone's hair falling on it or someone intentionally writing on it as a joke. This was a flub by the prop crew though, I wonder where the guy's working now. UFO Reflections can often reveal things that don't want to be seen. That's why spies and intelligence officers often recommend checking your six by looking in mirrors of cars and store windows while you're trying to be stealthy. But I'm going off topic now. Anyways, in one of the photos, the reflection shows an object suspended in the sky that has never been explained. It's terrible quality as per usual, but people compare it to a studio light. Nothing on the lunar lander really resembles this object also, so we really don't know what it is. It's probably aliens though, right? Come on, let's be real here. Crater Face Jets are powerful, powerful machines, and being so, they should leave an impact crater on the surface when they touch down, right? As the moon is supposed to be layered with dust, there should be some telling of a landing. However, photos of the landing do not show any visible crater underneath the landing module. This convinces people that it was simply placed on the surface. NASA retorts that it simply would not make sense that they fired a module with astronauts on it fast enough to create an impact crater. Makes sense to me too. Instead, they say that the module was used with significantly lower thrust than what people think, and when it landed on the solid rock surface of the moon, it would not have made sense for it to leave a substantial mark like an impact crater. After all, they want to land, not destroy the moon like the asteroid in Armageddon. Slow-mo guys. When computers came out, people were able to analyze conspiracies in much greater detail than ever before. Just think about the JFK assassination and imagine how many times people have played that clip over and over again, so they can milk everything they could out of it. People did the same for the film from the moon landing. If you increase the speed by two and a half times, the astronauts move exactly like they would if there's normal gravity. This is slightly suspicious to people, but they continue to pick at the authenticity by pointing out possible hidden wires and cables that could have helped them jump great heights. Photos are incredibly hazy and low quality. Few people actually believe these theories, but you're welcome to sit there with a magnifying glass going frame by frame if you want to. No Star Wars 
There's really not that much in space if you think about it. I mean, it is called space. And between most objects is a ridiculous distance regular people can't even begin to comprehend. You know what space is full of all the time though? Stars. Guess what we did not see in any of the photos from the moon? Yep, you guessed it. Stars. There's a distinct lack of light sources from stars in pretty much all the photos from the trip. It's a little eerie that the vast expanses of space are completely black and empty. There's no atmosphere to cloud stars, so theoretically it should be very easy to spot the bright lights from other stars. But the pictures remain vacant. It is theorized that NASA left the stars out because it would be impossible to map them out accurately, and keen observers would quickly be able to discern the authenticity. While NASA claims this is due to low quality photos, their defense lacks credibility. Is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star a conspiracy? Don't ruin our childhood, NASA. Got you in my sights. To assist the astronauts in taking photos, there were crosshairs included to help them aim which were imprinted along with each of the photos. Interestingly enough, some of the photos show the crosshairs being covered by objects, as if they were edited in afterwards. This phenomenon did not happen once, but rather multiple times. It seems like a terrible photoshop job to me. It really does not make sense, but it occurs in a photo of the American flag, and one more time in a photo of the Land Rover. Deja Vu Despite labeling two photos as being taken many miles apart, two photos from the moon landing show the exact same background behind it. Their claim of distance is an outright lie or mistake. That's up for you to decide though. NASA scientists defend this attack by claiming that the small size of the moon makes distances appear much closer than on Earth. Regardless of this, the backgrounds are definitely exact replicas of each other. Why would they label these photos incorrectly and make it seem like they went farther than they actually did? Remember in Transformers where they turned off the tapes and went to the dark side of the moon? If they did actually land there and this indeed wasn't fake, maybe they really were hiding something. 100. Okay, well let's take the next listener phone call. Hello, this is Science Fantastic. You're on the air. Any comments or questions? Uh, my name is Neil Baker. I'm in Kennewick, Washington. I listen to KTCR. And uh, I'm one of those people, actually I might be one of those kooks that doesn't think we went to the moon. Um, I don't think I'm a kook. I think I've got good reason to think we didn't go to the moon. And uh, they basically boil down to two reasons. One is that the spacesuits that the astronauts are in are impossible, and the cooling system is preposterous. The nickel porous plate ice sublimators that they allegedly use to cool themselves, uh, you can't find any information on them. We've been allegedly using them for 50 years. Uh, there's nothing in a textbook about them, there's uh, hardly anything on the internet about them, and you've never seen a demonstration of one in operation, which could easily happen in a high vacuum chamber that NASA allegedly has. Um, the suits are impossible because those kinds of suits with the flexible membrane would be, op would be impossible to operate in a high vacuum, and that could be proven very easily on Earth also with the use of high vacuum chamber. Uh, which still isn't used either. So I think the moon landings are fake. I think the Gemini spacewalks are fake. I think the International Space Station is fake. And I think the alleged spacewalks at the Hubble Space Telescope are fake, which I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Okay, well, you ask a mouthful, so let's try to break it down one by one. First of all, there is that famous uh, videotape that says that, ha, the moon program was a fake from start to finish, and they list many examples. The main examples are not actually the ones you mentioned, but let me tackle all of them. Uh, the first main criticism about our going to the moon is the flag. The moon has no air. There's no wind on the moon. We learned that in elementary school. But there are our astronauts saluting a waving flag. You've all seen that picture. It's on many a website. The our astronauts saluting a fluttering American flag. Ha! Say the critics, obviously a fake, because flags do not flutter on the moon because there's no wind on the moon. Another thing they say is look at the shadows. If you look at the shadows, you see not one but two. And the shadows seem to be at different angles. Now, how can you get two sets of shadows unless it's a Hollywood movie set? Aha! A Hollywood movie set. Then you have a bunch of lights, and of course the camera crew don't keep track of the shadows, and one of them slipped out, and there it is, our astronauts on the moon with two sets of shadows, obviously Hollywood shadows, nothing to do with a real moonwalk. 
And you mentioned several others, but let's take them one at a time. First of all, the flag that flutters on the moon is not really a flag at all. It's made out of tinfoil, for God's sake. Look at the video. In one video, you actually see the astronauts putting the flag on the moon, and you clearly see that it's made out of tinfoil. It's solid. It's not a flag at all made out of cloth. So, of course, it doesn't flutter. It's actually bent out of shape precisely to give the illusion that it's fluttering. But, of course, wind does not blow on the moon. Also, if you think about it, if you have a starry night with the moon, uh, of course there are two sets of shadows you can see because the moon also casts a shadow. Well, earthshine is much brighter than moonshine. And as a consequence, of course you're going to get multiple shadows on the moon because you have sunshine and you have earthshine, which is, as I mentioned, much greater than moonshine. And then you mentioned suits and cooling systems, and hey, let's back up a bit. First of all, on Earth, we have many vacuum systems by which we can test our spacesuits. In fact, I took a film crew from the Science Channel. We flew out to Ohio, where we have one of the world's largest vacuum chambers. We test entire booster rockets, not just little spacesuits. We test entire booster rockets on this gigantic area, much bigger than a football field, which has a vacuum. You can pump all the air out. And yes, you can test spacesuits. Yes, you can test booster rockets, for God's sake. Forget spacesuits. So we know that these systems can operate in the vacuum of space. Not to mention the fact that the Chinese have sent astronauts in space. We're not the only ones who can do this. The Russians have done it, of course. We've done it. The Chinese have done it. Pretty soon, the Japanese and the Indians are going to be doing it. They don't see any problem at all. Plus, you say that we don't have a space station out there. But hey, you can actually see it. You don't have to believe it. You can get the coordinates and actually look at it with binoculars as it sails overhead. With radar, with sightings, we know that these things actually are up there in outer space. Now, also, some people think that we never brought moon rock back from the moon. Well, I had a chance to actually look at moon rock close up with a microscope. I was getting my Ph.D. at the University of California at Berkeley, which got some of the moon rocks from NASA. And personally, I had a chance to look at them under a microscope, and I was shocked. Instead of ordinary rock, you had mini craters, micro craters, craters inside craters, inside craters, inside craters. The only way you could have that is with the vacuum of outer space. So in other words, we really do know that moon rock taken by the astronauts is real moon rock because these are ancient meteorite impacts all the way down to the size of a cell. <laughs> 